Welcome youth, global studies, here we go. Today in our revolutions unit, <clears throat> we're going to talk about Latin America and how they came to be independent. We're going to focus ma mainly on their social structure. So let's get out our notebooks, get those pencils all good and warmed up, ready to take some notes. Here we go. First, some questions that we need to keep in mind when we're discussing colonial Latin America and the whole idea of Latin America. We need to think, what is Latin America? How can it be defined? Is it a geographic boundary? Is it a cultural boundary? What is Latin America? We also should think, what are the factors that can describe Latin America? Once again, this brings us back to the question of, is it geographic? Is it cultural? What is it? What does it mean to be Latin American? And finally, how can we define Latin America? Throughout this PowerPoint here, we're going to try and explain what it is. First, when we discuss Latin America, the factor that you need to think about is who had control during the colonial period in Latin America. Three, there was three main players in this area at the time. You have the Spanish, which controlled the western side of uh, South and Central America here. We see that it stretches all the way from uh, the western U.S. down through Chile on the western half of this map here, depicted in the uh, kind of burnt yellow color. Secondly, we have the Portuguese colonies. They didn't spread out quite the same way that the Spanish Empire did. Um, as you look at the map here, you can see the Portuguese controlled what is now Brazil and uh, a little of the surrounding area there. You can see that depicted in the dark green where it says South America and Brazil. And finally, we have the French. The French were also in this area. Um, you can see a small little dot of the green, the lighter shade of green, where it says uh, French Guinea. And then we also have uh, Haiti, which we've talked about the past couple of days um, when discussing the revolution going on there. Some of the economic factors that helped uh, draw interest into the Western Hemisphere and specifically more the Southwest Hemisphere here into South and Central America where the different riches that weren't as plentiful in Europe and Africa we have things such as gold silver sugar tobacco diamonds and then of course they were huge in the play of the slave trade Compared to the United States, South and Central America actually had more than double the amount of slaves that the U.S., the modern-day U.S., had. Um, this drove their economy. Um, the slaves were used in many different plantations. We talked a little bit about the sugar plantations and how important they were. Um, sugar wasn't as plentiful in Europe, and obviously everyone liked sugar, you know sugar in their coffee there you go you got two factors that South America is contributing back to Europe here now when we talk about the way that slaves were used in South in Central America um, we can't forget about the use of these systems called encomiendas um, this was a system of forced labor on the natives to Central and South America this was um, a way that the Spanish forced the natives into labor. In return, they would offer them protection. They would also teach them Catholicism and the language, uh, the Spanish language. But it was very similar to your stereotypical um, slave treatment that you would think of. It was brutal. Um, Oftentimes, death could occur. 
as you can see in the picture depicted on the right hand side you see a Spanish landowner farm owner um, beating his native slave so these this trade for labor wasn't necessarily an equal trade it was a forced labor system much like slavery that you would think of now we also have the Mita system this system was a draft used to get more natives onto this forced labor system uh, this turned out to be just as brutal and was a way that they could control the native populations now the main focus that we're going to focus on with our activity a little later is the complex social structure that is being used or was being used in colonial Latin America um, this is much more complex than the way that you think of the US social system in as the US gained its independence and um, started to grow um, this system consists of multiple different levels um, this depiction on the right hand side gives you a general idea of what's happening but as you'll learn when we start looking at some paintings by Costa at the end of our lesson you'll see how many different levels there really are um, but for now the ones that you need to be aware of one is the Peninsulares which is the Spanish and Portuguese these obviously make up the top tier there of your triangle as you can see on the right hand side and we also have the Creos which we talked about a little bit um, these were Europeans that were born in Latin America so your European descendants being born over in colonial Latin America this would make up your second tier you also have the mestizo which would be a mix a mixed native and a European so by mixed native that could be um, a native and European a native and an African um, so this is not your pure native um, with mixed with the European lastly is the mulatos um, that would be an African and a European mix there now some of the revolutions we talked about one already we talked about the Haitian Revolution which happened in 1804 and you should know by now the name Toussaint Louverture we talked about that quite a bit um, but really that revolution sparked a domino like effect that kind of spread across Central and South America you have your Haitian Revolution in 1804 which was led by Toussaint Louverture and then by 1810 you start to see all these different territories fall and uh, begin to spread the idea of revolution and freedom from your colonizer so by 1810 you have the Mexican Revolution which is led by Miguel Hidalgo another important name that you need to know is Simon Bolivar which was also in 1810 in Venezuela he also helped liberate um, other countries from their colonizers as well and also in 1810 you have Argentina with Jose de San Martin um, all of these revolutions you can link back to the start of the Haitian Revolution and by the end of the Haitian Revolution which was 1807 you have that domino effect and the spread of independence throughout Central and South America now not everyone in the world was happy with this independence movement um, you have the concert of Europe which is a grouping of European countries that wanted to stop this spread of independence get back over there establish their trade get their economic growth going uh, 
so this grouping of countries, which became known as the Concert of Europe, was threatening to send troops over. But the British and American armies, navies, military forces, didn't want this to happen. Um, British wanted to reestablish trade with the things that they don't have readily available uh, that Central and South America does. So British and Americans disagreed with this and threatened action against uh, Spain and Portugal that wanted to reestablish their colony in Central and South America. Now, this man on the right, James Madison, uh, was the president of the United States at this time of uh, independence, and we have what's called the Monroe Doctrine, which some of you may know, remember from U.S. history. Um, this Monroe Doctrine warned against any action against Latin America. So basically what that means is that any invasion uh, to try and attempt to reestablish their territories there would uh, get in return action from America. Now soon after these new territories established their independence, they needed strong leaders. And oftentimes what happened was they would set up a Republican form of government. So you have the semi-representative government. And with their lack of experience in the self-rule, soon they needed individual rulers to step up and take control of these independent territories. These people were referred to as the Cadillos. Uh, these were strong leaders who oftentimes ruled by military force. Um, these Cadillas did much to facilitate their economic growth through expanding some of their public works. Um, some things that they did were they would help to modernize or build roads, canals, ports, and as we all know, the importance of education to help grow their society. All of these were enforced and expanded upon in order to help the growth of their country. Now, with independence came new thoughts of economic growth as well. So some of the things that they tried to do were establish trade, um, set up previous trade partners. Um, as you can see here, by looking at the notes, you have one thing that they did was establish trade with the U.S. and Britain, who were allies in their growth and tried to uh, grow themselves through the trade economically. You have these uh, exports that are mostly raw materials uh, and cash crops. Cash crops were are crops that are grown for sale rather than for personal use within a family or a city. Um, but as this turns out, you had certain areas that grew rapidly and other areas that developed rather slowly. So you have this establishment of an uneven development and uneven disbursement of riches. Um, one problem that popped up was the dependence with the trade partners. Um, these areas that would grow their cash crops or have their materials, natural resources mined, oftentimes grew dependent with their trade partners uh, and depended on them for money to help facilitate their growth. Now, along with this uneven growth, you have this inequality of land disbursement. Um, you have the majority of the land is controlled by these three powerful elites. You have the wealthy, those with the social, social prestige, and also those with the political power. And now here's your task for the remainder of the hour. You may want to pause to read this. Um, we are asking you to compare and analyze the racial attitudes portrayed in colonial Latin America paintings. And these are the links that you will use.
Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.